We begin tonight with breaking news from Detroit's west side where two people have been killed in a shooting. This is in the area of Southfield Road in 8 Mile. That's where we find Fox 2's Jessica Dupnack. She's live at the scene with what she has learned. Jessica. I want to tell you guys specifically where we are standing because many of you know this area. We're off of 8 Mile, just east of Southfield. And if you know that sliver of land, you may know the panhandler that stands out there day in and day out. He is a double amputee and he is believed to be involved in this shooting, although we haven't confirmed that directly from police. Now, right now, there's an active police scene in this area. Let's take you back to a couple hours ago, some earlier video, and this happened right around 2.30 this afternoon. It's understood that a man in a black charger drove up to the scene. Uh, it's unclear uh, what he was doing, if he was driving, if he was specifically coming to this area to possibly target the panhandler. Again, a double amputee in a wheelchair. After he pulled up to this scene, there was one shot fired, believed to be from that driver. It's unclear if uh, that bullet took effect to anybody, including the panhandler. Now, then there was a struggle for that weapon. And during that struggle, that is when both the driver and the panhandler were shot. Now, the driver, he was dead on scene. We did see some viewer video of uh, folks in the area trying to resuscitate him, trying to give him CPR. It did not work, and unfortunately, he has passed. Now, the panhandler that is suspected to be involved, the man that is out here day in and day out, he was rushed to the hospital where he ultimately died. Now, the reason that we know this area so well, uh, a lot of folks are, are uh, uh, that work with Fox 2 will give this guy, guy money from time to time, give him food from time to time. Everybody in this area knows him. We actually did a story with him back in July. I'm going to let Detroit police pick it up from there because he was shot at that time. That's why we did the story. Take a listen. We don't know that at this time, but we do know that in July of last year, there was a shooting at this location. We're working right now to confirm whether or not these are the same individuals that were involved. Uh, that case was investigated and is currently inactive. So if there's anybody that has any additional information on that crime, we'd like to hear it. And the reason we're not naming that panhandler at this time is because next of kin has not been notified. We're hoping to get some updated information from Detroit police a little bit later this evening. But for now, we know that two people are deceased. Still a lot of questions as to what led up to the man driving up, potentially targeting that panhandler. A struggle for the gun resulted in both men being shot and killed. We will continue to stay out on this story. For now, reporting live in Detroit's west side, Jessica Dupnack, Fox 2 News. Well, Jessica, this is, in fact, the same panhandler. I know you said that uh, still a lot of questions, but why would he be targeted by somebody? I mean, in fact, the second time, as you mentioned, what was the motivation? Uh, could they even be related at this point? I asked the deputy chief that question because when we covered this back then, it was our story, my story. Uh, there was a, a kind of a rash of these panhandlers in the greater eight mile Southfield area that were either shot or shot at. Uh, again, you heard the, the Detroit police say that that's an unsolved. It's quite possible that he was targeted for being out here. He was out here every day. And I got to tell you from personal interactions with him, he's a very nice man. He's a double amputee. He has use of one arm. Mm pretty harmless. Very sad. All right, we will make sure to have updates when they become available. Thanks, Jessica, for that. Well, tense moments early this morning as Macomb County deputies rescue a man from a house fire. Let's get live to Fox News' Charlie Langton. He joins us with details on this daring rescue. Charlie, what happened? Well, I'll tell you what, first of all, you got to give some credit to the Macomb County Sheriff's. Three of them on patrol here in Macomb Township, and then they get wind that there is a fire in this particular house. A man, 74 years old, disabled, unable to get out of a burning home. His daughter also, have they have some difficulties, and the family dog. Daughter calls the police, and the sheriffs come and get him. Sheriff Wickersham this morning, or not from this morning, very proud of his deputies, but look what they had to deal with. Take a look. Just before 1.20, early Wednesday morning, a Macomb County deputy on patrol in Macomb Township gets a call of a fire in an occupied home on Leanna Drive. Get the dog out, get the dog out, get the dog out. Come back, come back, come back. 
Macomb County Deputy Dang orders a 42-year-old woman out with the dog and using a fire extinguisher sees her 74-year-old father sitting there unable to move. Was the victim actually on fire? Yes. Right here. Preliminary investigation that he may have been sitting in the chair, fell asleep in a cigarette ignited uh, clothing and or a blanket. The deputy tried to smother the fire with a blanket, but he was unsuccessful. I believe, honestly, in their mind when he was going through the door, he just thought the house was on fire. His job was to get everybody out. Two other deputies, Court and Bartoli, carry the man, disabled and overweight, to safety. Proud of your people? Extremely proud. A great day. Now, a couple of updates here. First of all, the daughter, 42 years old, she was treated at a local hospital and released. Her father, 74 years old, still in the hospital, but in stable condition, he will survive. And the sheriff said that it's because of the quick actions of those deputies that rescued a man who was on fire. We understand the dog, of course, is okay as well. Good job to the sheriffs, and luckily, uh, be careful if you are smoking that seems to be the cause nothing criminal here just a terrible accident that could have been a lot worse i am live here in macomb township i'll send it back to you yeah certainly it could have been deadly you got to give credit to these deputies i mean we know firefighters are trained on what to do as soon as they walk into a burning home but to be able to walk into a burning home as a deputy and also save those lives that is absolutely incredible it's incredible that the deputies knew what to do. They had a fire extinguisher. They did what they could do. And then the fire department came and, and put out the fire. There's actually a lot of damage inside. We can't see it from here, uh, but it's chained up. It's locked up right now. So uh, this family has still a lot of other issues. But you're right. This could have been a lot worse. Good work for those deputies. Yeah, those three will be called heroes from that family, even though I'm sure they'll say they were just doing their job. A good story here with a good ending. Charlie Langton for us live tonight. Thank you. Thank you. A Romulus man goes before a judge after a wrong way crash that killed the parents of six children. 35 year old Angel Melendez Ortiz arraigned from his hospital bed today on charges including murder, fleeing and eluding police and reckless driving. Police say Ortiz, who did not have a license, stole a pickup truck from a gas station on Eight Mile in Greenfield early Saturday morning. Troopers pursued Ortiz with speeds topping 100 miles an hour before he crashed into an SUV on the lodge, instantly killing Ryan and Jen Ambrosio. Bond was set at $1.5 million. All right, just a wild day weather-wise outside today. I know woke up to lots of wind, and uh, yeah. the cold didn't get out of the way throughout the afternoon either. I think it's, uh, we're calling it maybe the calm before the storm, yeah. or there is some snow, that, snow that's on the way, and Weather Authority Stephanie Mead is here to tell us what we can expect. Yeah, for sure. So we do have snow off on the horizon for us here. Today was a cold day, though, for sure. We did deal with those gusty winds around 30 to 35 miles per hour for some. Drag down those temperatures. Right now, we're in the 30s. We're at 36 degrees in Detroit right now. For those out near parts of Ludington, you're in the mid 30s as well, low 20s up near parts of Marquette. You notice a few snow showers just a little west of us here. Our next clipper system will quickly move in, should be out of here by, uh, say, late tomorrow afternoon, but that's going to give us a quick dusting, if not up to an inch of some snow. Tonight, I do think we see that potential for a few lighter snow showers around. I don't think it's going to create any issues late tonight. You might see a few slick spots, though, early tomorrow morning. Lows tonight will bottom out in the lower 30s. We have that potential for a few snow showers early tomorrow morning. So tomorrow morning's commute might get a little dicey from time to time. Note timing on this by around eight, nine o'clock in the morning, some widespread snow showers early tomorrow afternoon, though, we should see that move out over the next couple of days. We do see an additional system here that could impact us, giving us the potential for some snow, some rain, some wind late Friday into Saturday and then bitter, bitter cold right behind that. We'll have timing on all that in the forecast coming up in just a few minutes. Roop. All right, a lot going on with the weather. We'll talk to you soon, Stephanie. Thank you. The Michigan National Guard holding a training exercise in downtown Detroit today. Our cameras getting an inside look at day one of the exercise at the Huntington Place Garage. The purpose to make sure National Guardsmen are ready to keep people safe with the number of big events happening this year, like the NFL draft and the auto show. The training that they'll be going through the next couple of days is to identify and mitigate um, potential hazards. A hazard as simple as a radiological substance uh, to an industrial chemical that would be possibly set there to harm um, civilian personnel. Well, I lied. 
State, local, and federal organizations all part of today's big event. The exercise picks back up tomorrow morning. A must-watch playoff game this weekend, of course, as the Lions face their former quarterback, Matthew Stafford. Yeah, block off Sunday night. All, All you're right. doing is watching this game, but some are taking a stand against number nine, saying, you know what, Stafford's old Lions jersey should be banned. Mm. Fox 2's Scott Wolchak explains. The Lions are in the playoffs, baby, and that means that they're taking on the Rams and a familiar face, Matthew Stafford, on Sunday. And if you think you're going to get into Thomas McGee's rocking your Stafford Lions jersey? Hang on a second. What's under this jacket, Scotty? Yeah, you got another thing coming. You've heard of no shirt, no shoes, no service. Well, at Thomas McGee's, the dress code is special come Sunday. If you got no shirt, we'll probably give you a shirt. If you got no shoes and you're in trouble, we'll, we'll take care of you. But if you got a Stafford jersey on, it's probably another place for you. Eric Olson means it. No Lions Stafford jerseys allowed. Ram Stafford jerseys are okay. So would you call the rule? What would you call it? Uh, you, you know, I would uh, call it common sense. Eric is the owner of Thomas McGee's in Eastern Market, a tailgating hotspot. He says repping a Lions Stafford jersey is disrespect. Yeah, a lot of us rooted for him to win the Super Bowl, but come on. This is the first Lions home playoff in more than 30 years. If you're going to use your one opportunity in, in, in most people's lifetime or second opportunity in their lifetime to have a home playoff game and, and wear wear the guy's jersey that represents a tough era for us and the guy who's tried to beat the same guy who's tried to beat us that day uh, you're just a different type of dude anyway Detroiters I talked with agree I honestly I kind of agree with it we got it he's moved on we have to also no you shouldn't be allowed in you shouldn't you shouldn't <laughs> I like it. What is worse, wearing a Stafford Lions jersey or a Rams Stafford jersey? Uh, both are unacceptable, so we're not doing either. If you only had that, I mean, would you feel bad having to take it off, or do you think it's, eh, don't no, wear it? Just put a piece of duct tape over it and put Williams on the back, and you got a Jameson Williams jersey. Does that work? Yeah, we'll, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it, but we could we could turn that into a JMO jersey, yeah. But as with any rule, you just know, somebody's gonna break it. If you had a Stafford jersey, would you be wearing it? Uh, I might. <laughs> just to be petty, I might, yeah. <laughs> Reporting in Detroit, Scott Walchek, Fox 2 News. All right, talker. it's a talker for sure, Taryn, and people are talking about it already. We want to know what you think about this. Should fans avoid wearing any Matthew Stafford gear this weekend? Get on social media and let us know by using the hashtag Fox2Detroit. It's already filling up with lots of great comments. We want to share some of these comments on the air at 6 o'clock, but you got to use that hashtag Fox2Detroit. Let us know what you think. A Garden City woman has made a big difference for her community, opening a 24-hour food pantry. The response has been tremendous. And guess what? She's not done yet. Fox 2's Amy Lang has the story. We got canned goods, uh, snacks. Ian Stewart just finished restocking the Elmwood Blessing Box. The 13-year-old visiting his older sister, whose family installed the Blessing Box in front of their Garden City home last April. A couple minutes ago, someone came by and donated two heads of lettuce, granola bars, and two gallons of milk. We service about 50 to 60 people a day. Elizabeth Freeman knows the need all too well. She works for Section 8 Housing, but this food pantry is extra personal. I utilize food pantries and other community resources a lot um, before I met my husband, and it was so hard with two young children just getting the help you needed. So Elizabeth and her husband wanted to do something that would give more people more access to more things, food as well as diapers and hygiene products. There's people that are struggling that work long hours and they can't make the time constraints of a food pantry or um, other community resources. So we decided we were going to make this blessing box, which would be 24 hour full access for anybody to come at any point in time. And for people like Jennifer Osborne, a mom from Garden City, this blessing box has been exactly that. They've been a blessing. I have a, a six month old son. I ran out of formula. She had extra. 
baby food, she has extra. Kids are out of school, she does little bags, for, you know, to help us while they're not in school to feed them and stuff. She's been an amazing blessing. Jennifer says she donates when she can, and Elizabeth says some days there are dozens of packages on their front porch from their Amazon wish list. While she and her husband initially funded the food pantry by setting aside $50 from their paychecks each week, now it's the community helping them take care of each other. Once the community really understood what it was and what it was for, people started donating, just dropping off canned goods, dropping off whatever they could to fill the box. Soon they'll be starting a mobile food pantry to help people who don't have transportation. And the mobile pantry will be basically a small tiny house filled with shelves that we will transport to anybody that needs it and their whole community will be able to shop for two hours. And Elizabeth's family is embracing that old adage, it truly is better to give than to receive. It's been a great experience, it really has. If you need help or want to learn more, go to the Elmwood Blessing Box Facebook page. If you can help, well, we'll put the link to their Amazon wish list on our website at fox2detroit.com. In Garden City, Amy Lang, Fox 2 News.